On this episode of Exercise My Dog, I'm going to be going over a pretty good one that I really like. Uh, this is a pretty good little motion that, that makes you uh, able to kind of go fishing with your dog in a sense of they don't necessarily bring the ball back or anything like that, but you are trying to uh, get the dog to the point they will bring things like that back. Um, it, it takes a little while to get dogs to understand uh, the pride that you get in uh, them uh, doing something like getting the ball uh, and bringing it back is more of a, a working pride that they should have uh, more or less other than um, you know just getting the ball stopping it and then having uh, having nothing to play with when they get when they return with no ball uh, you can start to humor this by certainly not taking the ball away inside you can toss them the ball inside do things like trade them for a treat uh, instead of necessarily uh, taking the ball from the dog what if you hold out something they would like instead and trade uh, so that you start to get the idea of reward and trade for ball uh, that idea of this provoking uh, you to give food um, you can start to humor that a little easier uh, in smaller quarters too, not something like out in the field like we're in now. Um, you really want to get them tuned into a small space, a uh, small activity space. Keeps your variable down on having to play a lot of chase with the ball too. You get, uh, you get access to swing and then throw the ball versus having, um, having to retrieve your own ball or not have the dog uh, bring it back to you, period. Um, what you'll uh, eventually get, Ainsley here, um, is the dog bringing it back to you because it understands that to, to, to keep the game in play, uh, we have to be together uh, with the ball still in motion. So, you know, whether you have just one of these or two of these, uh, you, can, you can really get access to different lengths with the same ropes. You don't necessarily have to make multiple ones. So, what I've done is I just tie a simple little knot, uh, pull through knot, and um, I've cut two holes in my tennis ball so that I can fit this all the way through. The knot should maintain it uh, from falling through. If not, you can double over the knots um, as well as uh, pulling through uh, the loop that I've created um, on the other side. It's pretty difficult getting that thing through, but what you can also do is take and pull uh, the other excess rope through that space um, and that will uh, give you access to, to keep that from, um, from falling through. So what I want to do uh, with, with this, this kind of activity is you know, really get the dog uh, moving um, through, through somewhat of a lassoing technique. I'm gonna take, uh, I'm gonna take and throw, uh, throw, throw our ball um, out and away from me. And uh, whenever, uh, she grabs hold of it. I'll start a calling motion um, more or less, you know, come or uh, back or anything that that you'd uh, you kind of uh, conditioned as your uh, request to come um, back to you. Uh, this would be more of a, uh, a fishing game once the dog actually has the ball. I'll be doing uh, a good bit of pulling back to me uh, to entice the dog to come back as well as conditioning them with, with the wording and commands that I'd uh, like to use. Um, this gets pretty fun. Um, honestly, it's uh, it's kind of a neat game that you can play with your dog. Um, but something I will I, I do do entice you to do is just to bunch your rope up in a convenient way, so that when you do throw it, you can uh, let your uh, your rope out accordingly. Okay. So even if you let go, just go and fish up the rest of your side. Now Ainsley will always bring this back to me, so I want to kind of go over what this will be like if uh, if she decides not to. So I'm gonna let her chew on it for a minute and I'm gonna go get my piece of rope. Now what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna get uh, just under slack, so don't necessarily have it, uh, because most dogs who are acquainted with a leash, when they feel tension, they'll go towards the tension if they're a matured animal. So let's say Ainsley's got her ball, she's not bringing it back. I wanna say, Ainsley come, and start to retrieve my line. Uh, this will get my dog coming back to me, Ainsley come, Good girl, and I could trade for a treat if I had one. Um, this would be the good time to start enticing the dog to trade instead of having an idea that uh, that this was their ball that they need to keep from you. Um, that being uh, a totally other game.
can get that herding dog to do these circles that engage the dog's natural instincts of prey drive. Um, you know, your Australian Shepherds, uh, a, a lot of different breeds that, that se seem to be a lot of trouble with families these days with children. Um, you know, there's a couple of other ones you want to think about your Border Collies, your, uh, your, your anything that's going to engage, um, engage something from a circling point of view. They're going to use this regardless. Uh, regardless if it's on your children, uh, if it's on your cat, your lawnmower. Uh, you know, my collie that we used to have and the two Shelties we had when I was growing up did the thing where they would chase the lawnmower around and around, bite the tires, all that. Uh, mainly because we didn't focus that energy into something, into a game, into, so into something progressive. Uh, we more or less just allowed them to do that. Uh, so they, you know, the position is open. They assume that is their role. <laughs> the, you know, if, if we make no protest, do understand that dog will, will understand that position's open and that this can be a potential job for them. Um, Ainsley's caught up in a rope a little bit. There we go. All right. So I want to do this one more time. Something else that you can get them uh, conditioned to is to wait while you, the ball is moving. Um, you can get a, a lot of maturity out of this activity by making them stay while the ball is being dropped and moved. Um, I'm staying all focused on the dog. I'm not focusing on the ball um, because I want her to realize it's me and her. This ball means nothing. Um, but what you can get access to is getting the dog to approach at your leisure, not necessarily when the object moves. Um, you know, a lot of prey drive dogs that, that are hunting oriented, they, they can understand this pretty easily. Just, but if you can get them to understand that just because the ball is there doesn't mean you get it. Okay. When I announce, that's when you should be able to release to get the ball. You can produce erratic behavior by releasing your dog to grab things. You do want to understand that the object of this is to release them to, uh, to a toy. I don't like to do this with food. Releasing them to go to food uh, sometimes can entice food aggression and, and, and make them want to guard these things, uh, especially with other dogs around. Um, drop it. Uh, this is what keeps my dog from being a pain. Um, this is my preventive maintenance. Um, and you can kind of understand that once you kind of condition this to be your daily routine or your activity uh, of the afternoon, the dog will take a lot of pride in this stuff and he'll get access to, uh, to your leadership as well as um, you're tuning in the elements that make him fun. Uh, you can show off a lot with these, these kinds of things as well as you're getting your confidence up that the dog will come back to you. Um, you know, once you've, you've played the little fishing game of throwing it out, re retrieving it back in, especially with your, even with your puppies, um, drop it, drop. You get access to have that dog go it. Okay, find him, find him, find him. Shh, shh, hey, hey. Good girl.